Hi, welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders, but as always, every age level is welcome to learn with us. If you've been with me this week, we are spending this week learning about characters. And if you haven't been with me this week, that's okay, because I'm gonna teach you all about it right now. Um, we've spent a lot of the week talking about the characters, feelings, their actions, and what that makes us think about the characters. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about, before we get started, character traits. So feelings and traits are two different things. Characters' feelings can change, just like your feelings can change, okay? So sometimes you might feel sad, sometimes you might feel mad, sometimes you might feel happy, okay? Those are feelings. Traits generally don't change. So let me give you an example. If you're a mean person, you can be a mean person that's sad, happy, or mad, right? I hope no one's mean. If you are a nice person or a kind person or a caring person, you can feel mad and still be a caring person. You can feel sad and still be a caring person. And you can feel happy and still be a caring person. So feelings change. Character traits, they generally don't change. So this week we're gonna spend time um, just looking at characters and talking about these things over here that we can learn about our characters and study them. Um, we can learn about our characters by studying their actions, the things that they do, their feelings, if they're mad, they're happy, they're sad, um, they're excited, their words, the things that they say maybe in their head or maybe the things that they say to each other, um, the way that they react to problems or events will also tell us about the, the character traits and how they interact with other characters in the story. That can also tell us a lot about a character. So we're going to get started. Um, and I want you to grab, in fact, go ahead now and get something to write on and something to write with. And we are just going to make a quick little chart of feelings. I'll show you in one sec. And traits. You don't have to write this part, but hopefully um, we're gonna write some later. You can write this if you want. But, oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Really quickly, get yourself in a good spot that's good for your brain Woo! and your body. Brain and your body. Oh. Stretching, stretching, stretching. Feels good, my brain is ready, I have some water. And um, I'm sitting comfortably and I'm ready to teach and I hope you are ready to learn. So stretch it out if you need to. You can always stand up while you learn. I teach while I, I mean I stand up while I teach usually. But because I have to record this, I have to sit. Actually, I, I'm, start, I'm gonna start rambling so I'm just gonna stop there. Nope, Mrs. Wright, no rambling. You can ask my students, I'm a rambler, okay. Let's focus. So we are going to make a chart of feelings versus traits. So I want you to just shout out some feelings to me, okay? Go. Angry. Happy. Yeah, excited. Scared. Terrified. Sad. Okay, yeah. Lonely, lonely could be a trait or I think it's more a feeling. Lonely, upset, 
thrilled. Good, these are all amazing feelings. Okay, now, those are things that change. I have felt all of these before in my life. And I can tell you, today I felt happy. Today I felt excited. Today I did feel a little lonely. And I was a little upset about something. So feelings change. Now, your traits your traits may not change that much. So think about what a trait is. So people could be mean. That doesn't usually change. Caring. Courageous. Brave. Honest. Loyal. Kind, helpful, good friend, nice. So today, while I was feeling all of these feelings, I would also say that I was being my normal good friend self. So I felt like a good friend today but I also was happy, excited, lonely, and upset. And, well, maybe, you know, my husband, he's very helpful. But while he was feeling being helpful, he also could have felt sad or angry. So feelings change and traits do not, right? Or generally do not. Most of the time your traits stay the same, okay? Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind and we are going to go over some vocab for this book because our goals for today are, I will be able to use context clues to understand unknown words. We're gonna focus on that one a little bit, but mostly we're gonna focus on this next one. I will be able to analyze a character's feelings, words, and actions. And these are the ways that we are analyzing them. We're thinking deeply about them by studying these things over here, okay? All right, here are some of the words. Reunion. So a reunion um, is where people have been gone for a long time. A group has been separated for a while and they come back together and they meet again and see how everyone's doing. So you might have family reunions, you might have class reunions. Generations. So generations are groups of people. So my generation and then my parents' generation. So Generations generally, most of the time, go by your age, okay? So I am not in the same generation as my mom and dad. My mom and dad are not in the same generation as my grandparents, okay? Um, anniversary. Anniversary is, um, so let me give you an example. That's how I teach vocabulary words as examples. So my husband and I got married on New Year's Eve, and then one year later, is our on that exact same day would be our first anniversary. So anniversary is like a mark in time that you keep remembering. So we're coming up on our second anniversary of our wedding, or you could have an anniversary of a death, or you could have an anniversary of um, marriage. You could have an anniversary of. I really can't think of what else there might be an anniversary of because I'm drawing a blank. Okay, doze off means like to fall asleep. I was dozing off earlier, so I had to have some coffee. Silo, I'll show you a picture of it in the book. I'll point it out, but it's this giant thing on a farm that usually holds grain. They're rather large and they're cylinder-like and tall. Um, tease, tease means someone is like joking with you. Trombone is an instrument. It is, uh, I believe, it's like the like, it's like long. Trumpet is the, it's like the horn. They're both horns, I think. 
And tribute. A tribute is where you say something wonderful about someone. So if someone got up and um, asked me to give a speech about my grandma, I would be giving a tribute to my grandma. If someone got up when um, they won an award, they would be giving a speech. And then if someone talks about them, that's a tribute, okay? So we are going to read this book with the permission from Peach, Peach Tree Publishing Company Incorporated. Thank you, Peach Tree. And this book is Going Down Home with Daddy, written by Kelly Starling Lyons. Going Down Home with Daddy. Hmm. What do you think that means? Going down home with daddy. So something about going home. So they're going somewhere with their dad, but going down. Why do they say going down? Why do they just say going home with daddy? Because going down home kind of implies that they're going on a trip, right? Yes. Okay, I'm doing too much of this. On reunion morning, we rise before the sun. Daddy hums as he packs our car with suitcases and a cooler of snacks. He says there's nothing like going down home. So kind of like going back home. Um, but they probably, they're driving somewhere, it seems, because they're packing a car. So they're probably like, if this is their city up here, they're saying they're going down home. So they're literally driving down the country or the state or the city. Pretty pictures, I know. We leave when the sky is still dark with sleep. Sis closes her eyes, but mine stay wide open. I watch as we drive from city streets to flowing highways under a sweep of sparkling stars. Little Alan, Mama says after a while, you better catch some Z's while you can. I try to rest, but I can't stop smiling. Soon I'll get to see my great grandma and granny and hang out with my cousins. But when I look at my hands, oh, do you see that? When I look at my hands, empty as the road in front of us, my grin fades. That means his smile goes away. The anniversary celebration. I bet everyone will have something to share except me. Hmm. I doze off in a cloud of worry and wake to sunbeams tickling my face. I squint and see a familiar John Deere tractor, a familiar John Deere tractor store and a gray silo standing at attention. We're almost there. That's the silo up in the corner. So they're standing at attention, which is just saying, this book has a lot of really great figurative language. So it's just saying like, they're standing there and they get your attention because they're big and they're bold. Sis and I sit up straight as pines when we see Granny's wood frame house. She's right where we left her after last year's reunion, scattering corn for her chickens like tiny bits of gold. There she is, Sis shouts. So you can tell by the words that this friend is saying. He's not saying them out loud, but he's thinking them um, inside his head. Um, like he's so happy. Um, but he's almost there. He's a little worried because he doesn't have something to share. So he, wherever they're going, their reunion, he is very, very um, excited for this. And he cares very much about his family. So that would be a trait. So excited is a feeling because he was feeling excited, then he was feeling worried. But he's still caring through all of it. Granny spreads her arms wide and wraps us both inside. My, my, she says, and showers our cheeks with peppermint kisses. I missed you so. All afternoon, a parade of family comes home. Grandma Loretta and Grandpa James, aunts and cousins, 
and more cousins than I, oh, I'm sorry, aunts and uncles and more cousins than I can count. Got a head just like your daddy, Uncle Jay teases me. Daddy's eyes twinkle. Now I know you're not talking about heads. Can't take them anywhere, Grandma Loretta says, laughing. So it seems to me like this family really enjoys each other because they're joking and they're laughing. They're excited to see each other. They're giving kisses. So once again, a feeling of excited. The trait is love, caring. While the grown-ups catch up, we cousins run to the fence to visit Granny's cows and goats. You doing for the, something for the celebration, Isaiah asks sis, singing Granny's favorite song, His Eyes on the Sparrow, she says. How about you? Reading Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. I made a scrapbook in Granny's favorite color blue, Devin says. You got something, little Alan? I kick a stone and my eyes start to burn. That means he's like gonna cry. Ready for a tractor ride, sis asks, saving me from having to answer. So again, this is where it's showing us feelings versus traits. He is happy to be here with his family. He loves his family, he cares for them, but now he went from excited to sad again because he doesn't know what he's gonna do for his granny. Grandma, granny, yeah, granny. I swallow hard and climb into the trailer with sis and mama. I lean against the hay as daddy drives us past the smokehouse and fishing pond and rumbles by a field dotted with puffs of white. Cotton has been on this land a long time, just like us, daddy says. Pa would drive your uncle Jay and me on a tractor just like this one. Look to your left, Pa would say. Look to your right. The land just seemed to go on forever. Everything you see, Pa told us, is ours. I think about what Daddy said and sit up tall. Pa is gone, but this is our time to come together and remember. Hmm. So now I'm thinking I'm understanding. Pa must be married to Granny, and it's saying he's gone, but this is their time to remember. So it, they must be remembering the anniversary of Pa's death if it's saying he's no longer with them. So it sounds like every summer they have a reunion on the anniversary of Pa's death. Daddy's words make me want to share more than ever. When the ride stops, I ask him what to do. Think with your heart, little Alan, Daddy says. That's what Pa always told me. Just then, we hear Granny. Come on and get this food while it's hot, she calls from the porch. We dash inside. That means they run inside. The dining room overflows with love-made dishes. Ooh, it's like my family Thanksgiving. Smoked turkey, collards, mac and cheese, okra and tomatoes, and biscuits oozing with mayha jelly, just the way Daddy likes it. Hand in hand, we create a ring inside the house Pa built for Granny. Heart to heart, we share what we're thankful for. Nothing is more important than family, Granny says tearing up as she looks at every face. Amens all around. On Sunday, I feel sick. Not a fever and sneezing sick, but a wish I had more time sick. The celebration starts at dusk. Get a move on, little Alan, Grandma Loretta says. You know Granny doesn't play. Growing up, we never missed a service. At church, Daddy points to the spot where he and Uncle Jay performed a duet on trombone and trumpet. My hands were shaking, shaking so much I could barely play, Daddy says. But then I saw Granny smiling. My jitters went away. I wonder if looking at Granny will help me. But when our eyes meet, all I can think about is being the only kid with nothing to say. So again, he's loving where he's at and what he's doing, but he is very nervous that he has nothing to say. 
Okay, I'm gonna run out of time if I continue to talk too much, so I'm gonna kinda go through this. After service, we head back to Granny's and change into our reunion t-shirts. Generations of our family smile from every wall. That means they have pictures of all the different generations of their family. Mama, Sis, and I peer at black and white pictures of Pa and Granny. Their eyes, brave and bold, remind me of Daddy's. You have their eyes too, Mama says. <coughs> Excuse me. That's when it comes to me. I think about everything I see when I'm here. I think about the tractor ride and Daddy's stories. I think about walking in Pa and Granny's footsteps and those of our people and Native people long before. I think and collect treasures from our land. I lift my head to the sun. Just before satin night falls, we sit outside on porch steps in metal lawn chairs. It's celebration time. Our people were stolen from Africa and shipped to this continent in chains, Daddy says. But no one could lock away their dreams. They dreamed on this land during slavery. They dreamed on this land as they made out of no way and fought Jim Crow. They, I'm sorry, let me reread that. We dreamed on this land as they made a way out of no way and fought Jim Crow. 75 years ago, a farmer and a teacher bought this land. Daddy gazes at Granny. And now, look at us. One after another, cousins offer their tributes. Sis song, Sis's song makes Granny's eyes shine. Isaiah's poem gets everyone nodding. Then I step forward. So his feelings are changing, but he's staying the same. His traits, his love for his family, his caring self is staying the same. I feel a spotlight. I feel like a spotlight is blazing just on me. I look down and say nothing. It's okay, little Alan, sis whispers. I lift my head and see gleaming smiles. I try again. So his feeling's about to change. Changed. Nervous to confident. Cotton for the quilts Granny made to keep her children warm. I say, holding a white cloud in my fingers. A pecan for trees Pa planted and all the kinds of love to climb. So look at his hands. I, I pinch dirt and let it rain to the ground. An earth for land that is ours as far as we can see. Fireflies wink and whirl and a carnival around us. That's right, I hear Granny say. Daddy flashes a thumbs up. I grin up at the moon. It glows back at me. We are a mighty family, Daddy booms. Mighty, we roar back. Then we try to make the night stretch on forever. As grown-ups slap cards and checkers against tables, we cousins dig through old trunks and laugh until our hearts explode with joy. Too soon our goodbye morning comes. We hug all the way to the door. Then we climb into our car and watch Granny and her house shrink and disappear. When we go down home with Daddy, Everything we see holds a piece of him and us. We head up the highway thinking about family and dreaming about next year. Such a good book. <coughs> Excuse me. So, again, I've said it a million times throughout this book. This friend's feelings change. This little boy's feelings change throughout the whole story. But his character did not. His traits stayed the same. So I want you to finish this symptom, sentence to him. His feelings were a trait to describe him.
His feelings were, so let, you can say the different feelings that he had throughout, and then a trait to describe him is because, I'm gonna give you a minute. So his feelings were all the different feelings he had throughout. So maybe his feelings were he was excited um, he was nervous. Um, he was sad when he felt like he had nothing to say. He was frustrated with himself that he had nothing to say. So those are feelings and they changed. And then a trait to describe him is loving. I think loving and caring and loyal. I gave three different traits. Because through all of those different feelings, he felt so strongly about his family the whole time. Okay, what a great book. I am so happy that we got to practice traits and feelings because we're gonna be doing um, some more of that and it's a really important skill. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you soon, bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.